This is quite hard to see. Oh, yeah, there, that's better. Webster's New World Dictionary of the American Language College Edition. Copyright 1957. Hmm. So I looked up the word Gentile. You know, French or uh, Latin gentilis of the same gens. Definition of gens, belonging together by birth or descent. In ancient Rome, a clan united by descent through the male line from a common ancestor having both a name and religious observances in common. All right, Shalom. First and foremost, all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakhak Kodash. Double honors to the apostles, it was Great Millstone, and Southeast Brothers doing this thing in sincere and truth and with charity. <coughs> That's like you. Yahweh is the Heavenly Father. Bahasham is in the name, Ba in Ha the Sham name. Yahweh Shai is the name of the only begotten Son. And Racha Quadaj means Holy Spirit. Literally translated Spirit Holy. Racha Spirit Quadaj Holy. And um Man, yeah, this 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 is two heavy definitions here through the spirit. And it uh it, it proves a few things. Alright, you have uh Gentile and Gentis. Which he just read Genesis. Let me go back a little bit more. Gens. Definition of gens. Belonging I mean, gens. to Right, gens. So like your gens. Gentile and gens. Which, um... The one, one thing it proved, alright? Just looking up gens. Is that the bloodline is through the father. Because in both definitions of gens... All right, he read the first one, even the second one. It says any tribe or clan, especially an exogamous group reckoning descent only through the male line. So that's how you track your genes. That's how you track your bloodline. So you check your generations, your descent, all right, your uh, nationality, etc. It's through the man. All right, plain and simple. Numbers 118. Um... But there's two more things proven here, and uh, we'll, we'll play the rest of the clip, Lord willing, which is um, well, la well, one thing is also uh, nations had their own gods. You had the god of the Moabites, the god of the Edomites. All right, the God of Israel. Okay. This inclusive shit that Christianity is about is an Edomite um it's an Edomite idea, man. This this is madness. Only people that's <laughs> look, that's the Edomite idea that, that Jake loved, that niggas, Latinos, Native Americans love because they they have they have a horse forehead. All right, they go after every uh, under uh, every tree. All right, but nations had their own gods, and that is part of the reason why Israel was referred to as Gentiles, because they followed after these other gods. All right, because they followed after these other gods. So let let's let's prove that. Because again, look what it said. Um, now they said this is a Roman area, but I'm gonna grab precepts that shows this is the case before Rome existed. In ancient Rome, a clan united by descent through the male line. So you, same, you gotta be the same nation, the same bloodline, from a common ancestor having both the name, so you got the same nationality, right? And religious observances in common. So not just coming from the same nationality. Coming from the same gene pool, the same line, you also had the same God. So when Israel followed after these other gods, they were no longer counted as Israelites. They were counted as heathens. They were counted as Gentiles. So let's prove this. Let's start with, let's start in the New Testament.
1 Corinthians 12 and 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. You know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. You can't switch from being another nation. All right? Because that's the word Gentiles means, you know? It means nations. You can't switch from being a nation, a different nation to being an Israelite. It don't work like that. Israel is referred to as Gentiles as another nation because Israel served dumb idols. All right? Because heathens are idolaters because they don't serve the true living power. It wasn't given unto them. We happen to be the nation that serves the real living power that made everything. But we're the ones that, that know this. We serve that true living power. As every nation served its gods. Every nation had its own God. They thought protected them. They thought looked after them. We happen to have the real living power. Um, let me look at this real quick. Isaiah, is it like Isaiah 11? Isaiah 10. This is Isaiah 10, and um, I get to the point. 10, as my hand has found the kingdoms of the idols, and whose graven images did excel them of Jerusalem and of Samaria, shall I not, as I have done to Samaria her idols, so do to Jerusalem her idols? So that's uh, um, it's another, it's another example, too. When the king uh, came to Israel, he said, look, if you don't trust in the, you know, He's, uh, he said, don't trust in, the, in, in Yahweh. All right, then now we destroy these other nations that trust in their gods. Same thing here, the king of Assyria, which modern day Assyria, you know, is uh, Edom. They say the same thing. Look, then look what we did to these other nations. Took them down. Their gods didn't save them. And they said the same thing about us. And essentially, Israel was serving idols. But the point is, every nation had its own gods that they trusted in. And when Israel served idols... Israel was counted as the heathens, because that's what the heathens do. This is Psalms 96. And five, for all the gods, I'm starting for, for Yahweh was great and greatly, yeah, for Yahweh was great and greatly to be praised, he is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. So that's part of being a, a Gentile, man, is to serve. Because that word for nations, that's what Gentiles are. For all the gods of the Gentiles are idols. So when Israel served idols, Israel was counted as the heathen. Ah, uh, this app. Let me go to this one. Ezekiel 20, 32. And that which cometh into your mind shall not be at all that ye say, we will be as the heathen, as the families of the countries to serve wood and stone. All right. So Israel was, was be, being heathen minded. All right. Thinking that they will be as heathens and serve idols. So uh, uh, Israel being called, you know, uh, uh, being called a Gentile also means, well, Gentile, of course, are the heathens, the other nations, but also can be referred to as an Israelite that served idols. All right. Because to be an Israelite isn't just to have the same bloodline. It's to also follow the true living power. 
just as all the heathens had their own gods. And uh, I want to hit, hit a couple on that, too. Um, this is this is Judges ten and six, and the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord, and served Balaam, and Ashtaroth, and the gods of Syria, and the gods of Zidon, and the gods of Moab, and the gods of the children of Ammon, and the gods of the Philistines, and forsook Yahweh and served not Him. All right, so every, you know, nations had their own gods that they went to and prayed to for uh, um, their security, their help. All right, that's just how it's always been. <laughs> we happen to serve the true living power. We happen, the, the Lord revealed himself unto us. We are recalled to be his actual witness. But this is how things worked in the ancient world. Every nation had their own gods, man. All right? This inclusive shit is new. Only people that 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 deal with this, that dealt with this in the ancient world was Israelites because we, you know, Israel had a horse forehead. Wanted to, you know, look at the different gods. So, oh, I like how they can do this. I like how this nation can do that. That's Ezekiel, the 23rd chapter. It looked good to him. And then you have Edom, who comes with this inclusive shit because it puts him at the top. He talks this one, you know, un one world shit, unity shit. But just like today, what does he show you? If he unites the world, Esau still controls the money. He still controls the central banks. All right. So he's still at the top. That's the funny thing about him saying become one people. He's still at the top, like in uh, Maccabees. Um, ah, let me see if it just works like this. Yeah, first Maccabees, first chapter. That was easy. <laughs> Call hello, me how about show me how it shine. And look what it says. Antiochus tries to replace. Oh, okay. It says tries to replace Judaism with paganism, right? Uh, verse 41. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole king kingdom that all people should be one people. And everyone should leave his law. So all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king. You know, heathens go along with whatever's happening, right? But the point is, he's still ruling over the people, but said, let's all become one. Leave your laws, whatever uh, uh, customs you have. Forget all that. Come follow what we set up. Yeah, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion and sacrificed unto idols and profaned the Sabbath. You know, and that's really the point, because who still was at, top, at the top? Eat him. He changed the custom set up what he wanted to set up. I, I'm going to keep going, man. Yeah. For the king has sent letters by messengers into Jerusalem and the cities of Judah that they should follow the strange laws of the land and forbid burnt offerings. You know, Greece was big on uh, orgies and all type of shit, man. And sacrifice and, and drink offerings in the temple and they should profane the Sabbath and festival days. And pollute the sanctuary and holy people. Set up altars and groves and chapels of idols. And sacrifice swine's flesh and unclean beasts. That they should also leave their children uncircumcised. And make their souls abominable with all manner of uncleanness and prof prof profanation. To the end, they might forget the law and change all the ordinances. 
and and what's and whosoever will not do according to the commandment of the king. So at the end of the day, he set up all these different idols and shit. But who set what the uh, um, standards and what to follow? The king. Esau still puts himself at the top. End of the day, he's making him, himself God. That's what he's about. And the self same manner wrote he to his whole kingdom and appointed overseers over all the people commanding the cities of Judah to sacrifice city by city. All right? But it's him making himself at the top. And he comes with this inclusive shit. Let everybody unite. Everybody it is. Like that's the Christian doctrine. You know? Uh, 2 Maccabees 6 and 1. And it goes right with that first Mac, right? Not long after this, the king sent old old man of Athens to, to, to compel the Jews to depart from the laws of their fathers and not to live after the laws of God. And to pollute also the temple in Jerusalem and to call it the temple of Jupiter Olympias. And that in garrison of Jupiter, the defender of strangers, as they did desire that dwelt in that in the place. So Esau come with this inclusive shit. That's why he said, what? Uh, Jupiter, the defender of strangers. That's the Christian doctrine. Do as you do as thou wilt. Now the Catholic Church is talking about changing the Lord's play, uh, prayer from our father to our parent in, in heaven. What? They come with this inclusive BS. This is not how it's supposed to be. <laughs> All right? This is not how it's supposed to be, man. All, that's how you know it. The scriptures cover everything. It lets you know the way things are, how it's supposed to be, and it, lets you, and it shows you what's wrong. Clearly, every, the Gentiles being heathens and just coming to serve the Lord is a, is a false doctrine, man. Anybody can make it as a false doctrine. When he's referred to as the God of Israel, the Gentiles of the New Testament are simply Israelites all right, that uh, served idols. Who lost their heritage? Jeremiah 17, 4. Plain and simple. Let's get um Jeremiah 2. And 11. Had the nation changed their gods, which are yet no gods? Every nation had their own god. Because everybody knows that, that, look, no matter what Esau wants to tell you now, all men is equal, this bullshit, he doesn't believe that, that's why he still sits himself at the top. That's why every nation wants to be the next ruler. End of the day, somebody has to be at the top. And every nation prayed to their God and thought that they could be that people. Fact of the matter is, we are that people. We have the true living power. We are the chosen people to be above all people. Okay? We will be the nation that, that's on top. But every nation had this idea. They knew this. So they had their gods. And they thought that they prayed to, when they prayed to their God, that God would, would put them above whoever they go against in war. Put them in better place. All right, but no, we have that true power. Let me keep going. Jeremiah 2, 11. Hath the nation changed their gods, which are yet no gods. But my people have changed their glory for that which doth not profit. From Genesis to Revelation, there is a chosen nation who the Lord set up to be his witness, who the Lord called his uh, uh, peculiar treasure, his fervent lover. We are that nation. He, a heathen cannot change their God. The Lord is not just all-inclusive. Not anybody can make who believe. 
the Gentiles in the New Testament that Paul went to to teach, all right, are Israelites who served idols. Be, uh, be astonished, O ye heavens, at this, and be horribly afraid. Be ye very desolate, saith the Lord. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and he with the mouth cisterns, broken cisterns, that can hold no water. So Israel forsook the power of our nation. All right? Forsook the living waters. Drinking out not only somebody else's cisterns, broken cisterns, idols and, and doctrines that would not help them, that would not profit them. That's why the scriptures say, Proverbs 5, 15, drink waters out of thy own cistern. And running waters out of thy own will. Let thy fountains be dispersed abroad. And we drink this water, you know, we, we, we speak it, we teach this wisdom. And rivers of waters in the streets, we prophesy publicly, right? Let them be only thine own and not strangers with thee. Let thy fountain be blessed. And rejoice with the wife of thy youth, which the wife of the youth is talking about wisdom right here. All right. This is going into wisdom. But the point is what? Drink your own water. You know, our nation, we have our own set of rules. All right. We have our own uh, uh, laws. Our own God, our own way of life. Who poured out his doctrine as, as water, as, it, as the scriptures say. And that's what we're supposed to be following, man. Us alone and no strangers with us, man. Drinking from our own fountain. All right. This is Baruch. It's a four. Baruch 4 and 1, this is the book of the commandments of the Most High and the law that endureth forever. All they that keep it shall come to life, but such as leave it shall die. Turn thee, O Jacob, and take hold of it. Walk in the presence of the light thereof, that thou mayest be illuminated. All right, Jacob is in Israel. Give not thine honor to another, nor the things that are profitable unto thee. Unto thee to a strange nation. The Lord changes not, man. The Lord ain't write these things to turn around and change his mind and say, oh, well, you know, now you regular heathen can make it. No. Oh, Israel, happy are we for things that are pleasing to God are made known unto us. We are the nation that knows what's pleasing to the actual living power. And that's, that puts us above these nations. And we're going to rule and teach these nations, man, when the time comes. But we are that chosen seed, man. And this is our blessing. This is our portion. This is our wisdom, our water, our will. Whether by birth or descent, in ancient Rome, a clan united by descent through the male line from a common ancestor, having both a name and religious observances in common. Back to Gentile, of the same gens, clan or race, also foreigner. So that is proof that a Gentile can mean an Israelite and it also can mean a non-Israelite. And the Gentiles that Paul was teaching in the New Testament were of the same gens as him. The Gentiles in the New Testament who believe are direct descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob through the male line. This. Uh, all right. 
Because uh, uh, to simply put it, man, the word Gentile, let me make sure. I was... The word Gentile is uh, really, it really means like he broke down in English. It goes back to genes. The word Gentile means nation. The word Gentile is simply, it's a generic word, <laughs> and it even comes off as derogatory for a reason, all right? But what it really means is nations. And here's the thing. This is why it's like it's such a slight. It's because essentially how things go is right here in the Dishes of Esther, you have the Israelites, then you have the rest of the nations. That's what it boils down to. Y'all don't matter. The Israelites matter. You know, you have the Israelites, you have the rest of the nations. Because the word Gentile simply means nation. But it comes off like that because you have the Israelites and you got everybody else. This is uh the rest of Esther 1 and 4. Now, this is the vision, right? And the two dragons... Hold on. I started at uh, one. Then Mordecai said, God have done these things. For I remember a dream which I saw concerning these matters. And nothing thereof hath failed. A little fountain became a river. And there was light and the sun and much water. This river is Esther whom the king married and made queen. And the two dragons are I and Ammon. And the nations were those that were assembled to destroy the name of the Jews. And my nation is this Israel which cried to the Most High and were saved. For the Lord hath saved his people. And the Lord hath delivered us from all those evils. And God hath wrought signs and great wonders which have not been done among the heathens. Therefore hath he made two lots. One for the people of God and another for all the Gentiles. That's that's what it is. It's two it's two things on earth. You have the Israelites, then you got all the other Gentiles. That's why in Daniel the statue it, it stood together. It was all the heathens. Yahweh Shah called this what? The time of the Gentiles. They took they all took their turns taking the next one down, or absorbing Slaki, absorbing the last ruler and setting up their kingdom. But they all going to get judged together. All these heathens are going to get judged together at once. Because there's only two portions. Israel and the rest of the heathens. Alright? That's what it boils down to. The Israelites and the nations. Alright? The Israelites and the Gentiles is saying the same thing as the Israelites and the, uh, and the nations. Or the other nations, Right? So let's prove this. But Israel itself is a nation. Right? Israel itself is a nation. We're the nation of Israel. The reason it's an insult is because what's being said is we, we are specified. We the Israelites. Y'all just everybody else. Y'all just the other nations. Y'all nation nationality don't matter. Whether you're Edomite, Moabite, Hamite, it don't matter. Y'all all the same heathens. It's that simple. This is Isaiah. We're going to prove that, right? This is Isaiah 11 and 10. And in that day, there should be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people, to which shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. See, the Gentiles are going to seek after, after the Messiah. Well, let's keep going. <laughs> And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people. So it's breaking down who these Gentiles are. The remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria. Uh-oh, the scattered Israelites. Obadiah tells us we became strangers when we, when we was taken away into these different lands. James 1 and 1 to the 12 tribes scattered abroad. But the precept to that is the first Peter one and one to the strangers scattered abroad. We were considered strangers. Then Peter further says after that, elect according to, to the knowledge of the Lord, right? But it says it calls those strangers elect. 
Well, Isaiah says, Jacob, mine elect. So, hey, the precepts don't lie, man. But let's keep going. Because the apostles taught us to go into words. So it's important to break these words down to what they mean and its different uses. There's a lot of narratives put upon these words that's not what's really what they're really about. So we got to put what's true out there, you know. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again a second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush and from Elam. And from Shinar, and from Hamath, and from the islands of the sea. He shall set up an ensign for the nations. And assemble the outcast of Israel. And gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Real quick, let me grab this precept to that. And then go back to it and go into uh, this word. So this is St. John 7, 35. Uh, 35. Then said the Jews among themselves, Whither will he go, that we shall not find him? That was as well as how we're talking about going, right? Will he go unto the dispersed among the Gentiles? We just read about those dispersed. All right. The, the, the outcasts of Israel, the dispersed of Judah. Right? We go to the dispersed among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles. They call the scattered Israelites, the dispersed Israelites, Gentiles, right here in St. John 7, 35. They call them, they call them Gentiles. All right, they call them Gentiles. Back in Isaiah 11 and uh 12. So this this enzyme for the nations is talking about the outcasts of Israel dispersed to Judah. That same word for nations, that word for nations, the same word for Gentiles up top. It means nation, people, nation people, usually of non-Hebrew people. Usually, right? Because it became a slur. <laughs> It became a slur. You just you other nations, but it but it simply means nation, and it can be used for what else? Of descendants of Abraham, of Israel, and it tells you it's used for nation three hundred seventy four times in the Bible, heathen one hundred forty three times, Gentiles thirty times, people eleven times, but it simply means nation. So the nation. The nations that were this enzyme before are the outcasts of Israel and the dispersed of Judah. All right. Who also was referred to as the slur. But I'm going to end it on this, Lord willing. Because uh, it said nations, plural. See, so, so how can it be the nations of Israel? Israel is one nation. Well, let's grab the precept. This is Genesis 35 and 10. And God said unto him, Thy name is Jacob. Thy name shall not be called any more Jacob, but Israel shall be thy name. And he called his name Israel. And the power said unto him, I am power almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall be of thee. Why is that? Because we are the nation of Israel. But we're a huge nation, so huge, we're broken up into tribes. We're basically our own many, it's a, it's a, many nations inside this one nation. It's miniature nations inside this one nation. And when you go into the blessing in Isaiah, it says a small one should become a nation. We're going to have so many offspring, all right? Hey, we're going to have a one man is going to have enough 
descendants to be as his own nation. A company of nations shall be of thee, and kings shall come out of thy loins. We are that chosen seed. We are the nation that has the true living power that has called and chosen us to be his witness. To be the one he connects with on earth. And we're going to rule the planet, man. But it says nation to company of nations. Well, let's see this word for nations, man. It's the same word. It's the same word. Gentile simply means nation. But we matter. The rest of the nations are counted as drops from a bucket. So they just lump together. They, they the Gentiles, uh, you know. They the other nations. But we are the Israelites, the chosen, called by name. Specified. Separated. <laughs> okay? Called. Chosen. And that's why the apostles taught us and, and been an example of going into words to really get the simplicity, all right, of Mashiach, man. Because once you get into these words and different things, you br break it down to the, the, the most common denominator to its plainest form, the understanding is so much simpler. This is 2 Corinthians 11 and uh, 3. But I fear lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through her subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Mashiach. So we get down to the to the the, the base and pl and plainness of things, man. Ain't no getting around it. All right. So with that, all praises, honor, glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakakodash. Double honors to the apostles, El's Great Millstone, and Sausage Brothers doing this thing in sincerity and truth and with charity, Shalom, Wa Baba Ba.